today a summary, a summary of Africa as the origin of humanity. We summarize that information and point it right inside your brain to know that humanity started in Africa and nowhere else. We have quoted before from UNESCO in volume two, which says as a result of the work of Professor Leakey and other subsequent work, it leads us to conclude that more than 150,000 years ago, um, uh, human beings, morphologically identical with the man of today, yeah, were living in the area of the Great Lakes, at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the Nile, and nowhere else. More than 150,000 years ago, beings morphologically identical with the man of today were living in the area of the Great Lakes, at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the Nile, and nowhere else. Which means, and UNESCO continues, that that means that uh, you know, uh, humanity started just as the ancients had said, at the foothills of the mountains of the moon. And I have clearly stated that the mountains of the moon is Mount Kenya, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Ruwenzori. But the only mountain associated with the Nile is Mount Ruwenzori. So beings would have started at the foothills of the mountains of the moon. Actually, if you live in Uganda, you will find that the people who live at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, the Bakonjo, the Batoro, they speak the same language as the Banyo and the Basamia, and the Bagisu, and the Basoga, because they had f trotted following the Nile up to the source of the Nile, following the river uh, Katonga, you know, Semulichi, you know, going up to, to you know, present day Bunyoro, but also Nyamgamba, you know, that becomes Katonga, pours into the, the Lake Narubale, and then continue into present day uh, Eastern Uganda spear into Kenya, go up to Miji Kenda. Now, I want to tell you categorically, without any shade of doubt, that the original human being started in Eastern Africa, nowhere else. UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific Committee Organization, says nowhere else. So there is the story of Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Hawa is the story of mythology. Is the story just like the story of Chintu and Gulu, just like the story of Sarah uh, and uh, Kundu or Mundu, you know, among the Bagisu, just like the story of Jipiri and Rabongo. Yes, people will say, okay, this is where it was done. Just like we go to Mitiana and say, Tanda. Uh, Tanda, Mitiana is in central Uganda, and there's a place called Tanda, and at Tanda, that's where Walumbe, you know, the son of God Walumbe was supposed to have fought the son of God Kekuzi, you know, for a long time, and, you know, where they, you know, took the fight, you can still see, you know, where that was being done. Let's recap and state categorically that the only story backed by facts, backed by paleontology, backed by bones, backed by molecular biology. But the only story that we can tell, artifacts, footprints, that we can see and touch is the story of Africa in East Africa, in the plains of Eastern Africa, and some parts of Central and Southern Africa, where humanity learned almost everything that we have today and walked upright. I have said before that our lineage comes from the lineage of great apes, starting 25 million years. If you go in southern Uganda, and if you go in northern Rwanda, if you go in eastern Congo, there is now what they call windy impenetrable forest. And in this windy impenetrable forest shared by three countries, we find the chimpanzee. Some of these chimpanzees, you don't have to go very far. Uh, you will see them now in the in uh, in uh, Entebbe, in the zoo in Entebbe of Uganda, you know, educa wildlife education center. There are these chimpanzees. They are our closest cousins. 
We differed from the chimpanzee of just by 1 or 1.2 percent. Our DNA is directly related, you know, to the DNA of this great chimpanzee. And this chimpanzee, uh, which started, which mutated from the monkeys about 24 million years, which went through the tectonic movement of East Africa that cre created the plains of East Africa, a story that I had gone to in length, becomes the chimpanzee that eventually eventually moves from the forest, learns how to walk, and by walking and freeing its hands, leads onto the path that leads to humans. A chimpanzee had first to learn how to walk because it was made to climb trees. If you look at the feet of the chimpanzee, it can bend this feet almost 45 degrees. If you look at the feet of the human being, you cannot bend your feet you know, beyond 10 or 15 degrees. Now, bending the feet and bending the arm, you can tilt the arm almost 360 degrees, but you can't bend your feet. That's what the chimpanzee you know, uh, was good at. Uh, being able to climb and jump from tree to tree. But inside that forest of Bwindi, inside, you know, the forest of East Africa, you know, there, once the uh, forest had receded, then the chimpanzee could start walking upright and give us the upright man, the ape-like man. So it had to do with the arm, the ability of the chimpanzee to hold things, the ability of the chimpanzee to climb, and over time, uh, this mutation would happen. Mutations normally happen, I said, after 400 years, genes begin to make mistakes. But a total mutation, scientists give it to about 20,000 years, that, every 20, that it takes about 20,000 years to move from chimpanzee to humans. 20,000 years to move from chimpanzee to humans. So the oldest human being, the Australopithecines, the Australopithecines, uh, you know, the Saranthropus, uh, like we have Tumai, Tumai from Chad, you know, who was uh, exercising his movement in the forest of Congo, extending up to Chad, you know, that forest that we have now in Congo extended to the Central African forest and the fossil of a man called Tumai that was found there and given a date of about 6.5 6 million years. Then Australopithecus ramidas, given a date of 5.5 .5 million years. Then Homo habilis, given a date of about 2.5 to 3.5 million years. All these fossils in East Africa, there is no story of humanity starting in Israel. There is no story of humanity starting in Saudi Arabia. That is not, there is no evidence, no history, no prehistory that shows that humanity started in Israel or in the Middle East. No prehistory that shows that humanity started in Arabia. African people, black people from East Africa moved northwards and populated what we call Israel. In fact, the first bunch of African people that went into what we call Israel today, uh, you know, were destroyed by, you know, the different forces of, uh, of the drought that covered the area and desertification, and they died out. And that was about 110,000 years. You know, 110,000 years, this bunch of African people that had made it up to there, they die. And it would take another 40,000 years before African people attempt that journey again. But the journey of the African begins here in Eastern Africa. So, black man and black woman, look at me. I am telling you that there is no other people that were created anywhere else other than the foothills of the mountains of the moon. There is no other people. God did not create anybody else outside East Africa, outside the source of the Nile, outside Mount Kilimanjaro, outside Mount Ruwenzori, outside the countries that we now call Eastern Africa. It was here that humanity played some of the most major parts. It was here that humanity developed the region.
you know, the concept of a supreme being that protects and guides and man manipulates your life. It was here that religion, fear of unseen forces that control and guide our life. It was here that we learned how to walk upright in Eastern Africa. It was here that we learned the handyman, you know, the homo habilis, learned how to use tools. And these tools, you know, would be like arrows. These tools would be like stone axes. These tools would be tools, clothes, sewing it together, putting it on your body so that you can keep warm, so that you cannot die of hypothermia. The original African person, the original African seed crop, seed population was not more than 5,000 or 10,000. And from the plains of Tanzania, from the plains of Uganda, of Central, of Eastern Africa, these people would move to populate the rest of the world. Now I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. Europeans say that they moved around the coast. Almost now, every other person on earth admits that humanity started in Africa. The story of Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Hawa, you know, is all played out here in East Africa. If Adam was not born in East Africa, then she didn't exist. If Hawa was not born in East Africa, then they didn't exist. If you, the person in East Africa, had not stood up to do what you did, there would be no humanity. But let me tell you now the story of how it was done and how this African moved from East Africa to populate the rest of the world. But first of all, I've said before, for those of you who have been following my teaching, that uh, in about 1984, a group of scientists, Rebecca Kahn, led by Rebecca Kahn and Stone King and another you know, microbiologist, were looking at mitochondria DNA. This is the DNA that you have that you pass, that the mother passes on to you. The father does not pass on the DNA and the son, it is inherited from your mother. It is called mitochondria DNA. Now, it looks at who is a mother to us all. It is passed from mother, you know, to daughter. The mitochondria DNA is what we inherit, you know, from our mother. It is not part of the chromosomal DNA that is in our genes. No, it is passed without passing through the filtration process. So Rebecca Kahn gathered all these women, you know, looked at African-American women in America and white women in America. And she was looking at the genes and how they mutate, the variations, to see. Because if you have lived on Earth longer, then it means your genes have multiplied and varied and mutated longer than everybody else. And when she saw the genes of African-Americans, she thought she had a mistake. She had done a mistake. Rebecca Khan, who did this, I can show her to you. you know, in fact, let me bring Rebecca Khan herself so that she can tell you what happened and how you know, this study was carried out. Professor Rebecca Khan was the pioneering scientist who uncovered the first all-important clue. I started working on human mitochondrial DNA so that I would have some kind of view that was objective that would help me understand and help other people understand how humans around the world were related. With this new science, she could. Harmless mutation happens all the time in some part of the mitochondrial DNA, leaving minute markers at every change. These markers are like barcodes and can be read in the same way. Khan and her team discovered the changes happen at a fairly constant rate. They found the groups with the earliest markers were the Africans living inside Africa and wondered if they might be the oldest people in the world. I was very excited when I first started to get evidence and it was so counterintuitive. I'd put 20 Europeans and 20 African Americans on a sheet of x-ray film and every African American showed differences and all the Europeans looked the same. And I thought I'd mislabeled something or I thought I'd made some drastic mistake. 
and we kept repeating and repeating things. And as we got more samples from different areas, I realized that it was a, a difference in the pattern and that this whole new type of evidence based on mitochondria was going to change the way we thought about modern humans. In 1987, Kahn and her colleagues published a paper showing for the first time that the markers stretched back to Africa, showing quite clearly that this was the birthplace of the human race. New Guinean tribesmen, Parisian bartender, American teacher, Polynesian farmer, all were improbable relatives linked through one black woman 150,000 years ago. Their findings caused a sensation. The responses of people were sort of amazing. Uh, the public was genuinely interested in certain aspects of it, but there was a, a tendency to misinterpret the data because of the terminology used to describe this woman, African Eve. And people thought it meant the biblical Eve, the single woman in the, in the Judeo-Christian Bible of the wife of Adam. I have to say, even my own uncle uh, sent me a Christmas card the year that our study was published saying, how dare you, you know grandma wasn't black. Because eventually Rebecca Kahn would reveal, would show that the first human came from East Africa about 150,000 years ago. And it was from East Africa that every human being on earth got their genes and got their inheritance. That the black woman is the original woman. And this was what was carried out in the Newsweek magazine of 1987. Rebecca Khan actually said that her own uncle was very angry because of the racism. Why is there racism? Why have white people found it difficult to accept that humanity started in Africa? Two cardinal reasons. Number one, it derailed the whole story of Israel or the Israeli or, or the Jews, you know, or the so-called Jews or the Semite or the Hebrews being the chosen people. I have been to Israel. I have traveled in Israel. I have sat with the original people of Israel who are darker than me and darker than you. And when you ask them where they come from, they all point to East Africa. So the number one thing of we grew up in the Bible, we grew up in the Quran, or we grew up in the secret books, and they teach that it was, you know, the, the Jews or the Hebrews who are the chosen people uh, had is the rail. Because if they were the chosen people, then the Hebrews were African people from East Africa. They are the people that God chose. They were the only people on earth for almost five million years. So there was resistance there. Secondly, White people who are now dominating the world to know that their grandfather and their grandmother is this black woman really was something amazing. In fact, Rebecca Khan says that her own uncle sent her a postcard saying, how dare you suggest that, you know, we were all came from black people. Your grandmother wasn't black. But guess what? Your grandmother, whether you, are, whether you are Italian, your grandmother, whether you are Australian, your grandmother was a black woman. And you owe it to your grandmother. However, we know that after mutation, you became a renegade, pursuing your grandmother for destruction. You even took your uncles and your cousins into slavery. The European scholars, what I was saying, that they have always maintained that the African walked on around the coast, around the coast of uh, Eastern Africa, on to Eden. And when they get to Eden, they cross from Eden into, uh, they cross from Somalia, you know, or Djibouti, into, or Ethiopia, into present day Eden, you know, or in the Arabian Peninsula. And there they found the grassland and moved the Arabian Peninsula, follow it up to India, and go into Malaysia, into Indonesia, and then somehow cross into Australia. The reason they are making this argument was because they are saying that this black person who could outwit lions, this black person who could outwit zebras, this black person who gave us articulated symbolic language, this black person who preserved the seeds and was able to domesticate animals, to trap a cow and bring it into a home and settle it there, that this black person could not make a boat. 
he was not sailing. If he was sailing, then they would say, hey, he moved from Kenya, he settled on Mijikenda, he moved from Tanzania, he populated Zanzibar, and then he went to Australia. That is precisely what happened. That is what happened to this black person because this particular black person had navigation skills. He found himself on doors and canoes like this one in Zanzibar. And he navigated to the rest of the world. And that is why the genes of the people in Australia are quite unique. They are not related to the people of Malaysia. They are not related to the people, to the Samangs, or the people who populated China. The people who populated Malaysia up to today are black people. Up to people who populated China. The Samangs that I have always talked about, which uh, I'm going to show you today, have always been where are different from that of Australia. And the genes of the people of Australia come from the original black woman, which black woman were lived in East Africa. What does that say? It means they sailed across the Indian Ocean. They can accept that they sailed from Malaysia to Australia, but they are not sailing. They sailed from, from Eastern Africa to, to Australia. I am telling you that is what they did. They sailed into Australia, sailed into China, and then other African people sailed into South America. African people through Angola, through West Africa, through Nigeria, sailed directly into South America. So the Mongoloids, who crossed Beringia, you know, through Russia into a round corridor in North Africa, in North America, those Mongoloids, when they got to America, they found already established black people. And the genes of those black people that were in South America, in present day Argentina, and in Brazil, and in Peru, were completely genes from East Africa, from that seed population of the original you know, black woman that populated the world. So, here you are again, I'm saying to you, that these African people, that these African people, some of them, yes, followed the Nile, crossed into present-day uh, Palestine. Some of them walked and crossed into present-day Saudi Arabia, lived in Saudi Arabia for a long time, almost 10,000 years. They left Europe, you know, because at that time Europe was covered in ice. And they didn't cross into Europe, but instead they took the route to India and populated the areas of present-day Indonesia. Then about 70,000 years, there was a huge meteorite, you know, there was a volcano, you know, that uh, almost, uh, you know, explodes and, uh, and, uh, and burns most of the people that lived in, 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 in Indonesia covers the whole world, you know, with darkness. But some African people survived it. And fossilized remains of these African people found around this time also indicate that African people were tired in that part of the world by 70,000 you know, BC. They would then populate Japan. And I have said before that the people that populate Japan, particularly uh, were called Masaba Negroes. Masaba Negroes. That is why the people that leave Masaba, the people that leave these plains that go into Saudi Arabia, when you go into Saudi Arabia and Babylonia, you will find the Arur in Saudi Arabia. In the epic story of Gilgamesh, you will find Arur. In the epic story of Gilgamesh, you will find Neon Saba. Neon Saba. In the epic story of Gilgamesh, you will find Nasuna. So this, this, you'll find Humbaba, you know, you'll find Masaba, you know, uh, be, why? Because the people who populated this part of the world, they had learned their language from East Africa. They had gone there with articulated symbolic language. And therefore, they will still carry these names with them. So at the same time, this Masaba also moved through Kenya and reach Mijikenda and go directly into Japan. And I have labored to explain that the Japanese names are like African names, the Takahara, the Nakamura, the Kato, the Toyota. I have said that Shimono 
which is the official Japanese garment, is an African name from the Mamasaba that live on a mountain that we now call Mount Ergon, Ichimono. They eat bamboo. In China, they eat bamboo. In Japan, they eat bamboo. They call it Amalewa, you know, Amalewa. So Amalewa is also in Japan. The soup that they eat in Japan called Wakame, you know, Wakame soup. Wakame is everywhere in West Africa. So there is that connection between African people and the rest of the people. And those people came directly from Eastern Africa and nowhere else. Now in Australia, you know, these African people that populate Australia, they come directly from Africa and they followed the ocean that was called the Ethiopian Ocean that we now call the Indian Ocean and they populate, you know, that part of the world. So humanity starts in Africa. Humanity starts in Africa, the foothills of the mountains of the moon. Humanity learns how to walk upright here. Humanity learns how to domesticate animals here. But when African people first populate the rest of the world and then they turn and go into Europe, to populate Europe after ice had rescinded. So by 40,000 years, we find African people in Europe known as the Gromordi. They colonized Europe, but however, they found another group of people that were known as Neanderthal, who were African people that had left Africa around uh, almost uh, uh, you know, fifth, uh, over 100,000 years. This Neanderthal, the oldest Neanderthal, is the broken hill man of, of Zimbabwe. Of course, it is called Neanderthal because the bones of this creature called Neanderthal were discovered near the Neander Valley, in, near the, in, in the Neander Valley, near the town of Düsseldorf. You know, workers in a quarry had discovered these, uh, these stones. But the African uh, Gromordi overpowered the Neanderthal, although the Neanderthal also, they have a line from Africa, but they were overpowered by these smart, brainy people that came from Africa. And if you look at the original figurines, or the original artwork of the people that populated Europe, most of, the, of them, you know, were hot and tot Venus. They would have stetopigic, uh, stetopigia, the unusual accumulation of fat on the black woman is behind. You know, they would have, be, you know, they have a big chest, you know, wide hips like that of African people. They were a totally, totally African people that populated Europe before, you know, this period of time. Uh, you know, at this period of time, 40,000 years. So the white person then comes from a black person around 20,000 years as a result of genetic mutation. Because one of the things that had enabled the African person to be successful in Africa, to be outrun most of the animals, because a, black, a, a human being can outrun a lion. A lion runs faster, but this human being goes after the lion because this Af African had developed in East Africa something quite significant, aquiline sweat glands. The sweat glands enabled the African to run. The, the sweat gland enabled the African to move vast distances. And with these vast distances, this African could therefore be able to overtake most of the animals, to outsmart them and to take on most of the heat. I have labored before to explain to you the importance of melanin. Melanin, one of the most significant, important aspects. You need melanin because it, 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 it synergizes the ultraviolet rays of the sun and the energy from the earth. So this melanin was therefore critical for the human being to develop in East Africa. He had to protect himself against the ultraviolet rays of the sun, and he had to populate areas that had sun. So he was able to screen bad rays and allow, keep them out, and good rays and keep them in. Melanin controls fatigue, melanin controls sleeping cycles, melanin controls aging. So this elder black person was able to travel everywhere, guide the young people into new lands. Because you, the African, are the explorer. You are the person that explored the world before everybody else, black man. And if you are watching me today, I am telling you, black person, travel. Travel. When you get an opportunity, travel. When you don't have an opportunity, travel. When you are stuck, travel. When you are hungry, travel. 
travel will be able to open your eye, to open your horizon, to learn new things, to put you in that frame where you started. Because black person, you started traveling. You are the traveler. You are the original Marco Polo. You are the original Ibn Battuta, a black person that traveled almost the whole world on foot. Travel, black person. Travel in Uganda. Go to northern Uganda. Go to southern Uganda. Travel in Tanzania. Take a bus and go to Kenya. Take a bus and go to Ethiopia. Take a bus and go to South Africa. Go in all parts of the world because that is how you are able to conquer the world. That's how you are able to dominate the world. When your friend wants to go somewhere, travel with them. When your friend wants to go to Congo, travel with your friend to Congo. Travel in northern Nigeria. Travel in southern Nigeria. Travel in the, in, in, in the oil states. Travel in the river states. Travel and go and see the Ifa Edu. Travel and go and see Ermina Castle, Cape Coast. Travel and see the Akan in northern Ghana. Travel and see the Bambara and the Sarakori. You need to travel, black person. Because from ancient time, you have always traveled. You are the original traveler. Your grandfather inspired you to move and sat down and directed and gave advice. As you moved from land to land, as you colonized area to area and populated it and put in place organizational systems that survive up to today. That is what made Africa great. African people being able to travel. Thank you.